अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान वेलकम माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टू आवर लेक्चर ऑन स्पीच साउंड्स यू माइट बी वंडरिंग व्हाई वी नीड टू टॉक अबाउट स्पीच साउंड्स बिकॉज़ रिमेंबर इन द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज देयर इज always not a one to one correspondence between the spelling and the sound well in order to understand the speech sounds we will have to see what actually happens when we speak you know that most of the sounds in english are aggressive aggressive my dear students not aggressive e g r e s s i v e that means in most of the sounds of the english language I'm not talking about the letters my dear students I'm talking about the sounds of the English language you would notice that the a comes out what really happens when we speak I'm sure you have heard of the wind pipe so we must look at what is happening when we speak how is it that sounds are produced so let us look at the first slide the lecture as you know is on speech sounds what is now shown here my dear students are the organs of speech this is what is there inside your mouth you will not be able to see what is inside your mouth and therefore we have tried to show you in this diagram what are the different organs of speech you would realize that the tongue is very important and if you move your tongue upwards and try to touch the roof of your mouth you would notice that there is something hard there which is the hard palate you have the teeth ridge which you know you have the lips you have the tongue which has the front the tip and the back you also have something known as the nasal cavity when we speak my dear students air comes out of our mouth and that is why we call these sounds oral sounds can we look at what are the different parts now as i showed it to you in that diagram the larynx the vocal cords the glottis the teeth ridge the hard palate the soft palate the uvula the tongue and the lips let me say something more about these parts this is the phonatory and the articulatory systems which create the sound you know the science of speech sounds is called phonetics which comes from the word phone which you know means sound from which you have words like telephone so you have the larynx you know you have probably heard of laryngitis when you have a sore throat when you are coughing and you go to the doctor the doctor asks you to open your mouth and say ah he probably puts a torch and sees whether there is any inflammation in your larynx then you have the vocal cords my dear students look at me and you will see look at what i am doing you have to place your hand on your throat place it very lightly look at what i am doing and you will understand what i am trying to point out if you put your thumb or any one finger at the point in the throat where i am putting it you will notice that there is something which moves these are your vocal cords in some people it is more prominent and we also call it the adam's apple when you put your hand there i've just pointed out your finger any one of your fingers you will notice that it moves the movement or the vibration of the vocal cords produces voice the voiced sound and the voiceless sound about which i will talk in greater detail when we look at the consonant sounds in the english language 
But are you able to feel what I am saying, my dear students? Can you say the sound p and the sound b? Say p and say b. You would notice that there is vibration in one. Can you now try saying t and d? Can you say k and g? Can you say f and v? T and d? Remember, I am talking about sounds. I am not talking about the letters of the English language. I am not talking about the alphabet. I am talking about the sounds. Because there are only 26 letters in the English alphabet. But as this lecture goes on, you will see how there are many more sounds in spoken English. So, we were talking about the voiced and the voiceless sounds. Let us look at the slide once again my dear students and you will notice that after the vocal cords I have said glottis. Now what is glottis? Glottis is the opening between the vocal cords. You have a glottal sound called H. Uh. We will come to that again when we talk about the consonant sounds in the English language. So, what do you have? You have the larynx which is somewhere here. As I told you, you can't see it and that is why it is important to see it in the diagram. You have the vocal cords and you have the opening between the vocal cords. Let us look once again at the slide and you will see that you have a teeth ridge. Your teeth, not single tooth but teeth ridge. Then you have the hard palate which I already pointed out that if you take your tongue and try to reach as I am doing now the top of your mouth you will notice that there is a hard surface which is called the hard palate. The soft palate is further down inside the mouth and you cannot see it. You cannot even feel it because it is further down and your tongue cannot reach that. And then you have the uvula, the tongue of course you know and the lips. Why am I talking about all these parts of the mouth because when we talk about sounds you will see that one or the other of these parts of the system the phonetary system the articulatory system is what creates speech sound we have to learn speech sounds separately in the English language we might not need to do it in many of the Indian languages because what we write is how we speak but in the English language what we write and how we speak are two very different things very often. Just write two words my dear students the word but and the word put. The word but and the word put you would notice that both of them have the same letter U. If you were to write that in Hindi or Gujarati you would write but b anitta and you would write put with the u ke matra raswa u in put but in the English language b u t p u t but one is but and the other is put. No wonder we talk about having to learn speech sounds which are not always corresponding to the spelling that we write. I shall give you many more examples to prove this point. So what happens? I told you that most of the sounds in the English language are oral. What do I mean by that? As I pointed out earlier, I mean that air escapes through the mouth. You might wonder how it is always through the mouth, isn't it? No. When I talk to you about the nasal passage, the difference will become clear. Let us look at the teletop now my dear students and you will understand what I am saying. Can you see the oral passage and where is the air coming out? The air is coming out of your mouth. Say any of the vowel sounds that you know. Say ah, say e and you would notice that air escapes through the mouth. That is air is coming out of the oral passage. Can we now look at another slide on the teletop?
it is not the oral passage here through which air escapes. Air is now escaping, you will notice, through the nose. When does that happen, my dear students? Can you see the nasal passage? When does that happen? You know, when you have a cold, my dear students, and the voice becomes nasal, you might smile if I try to speak as if I've got a cold. But you can understand that I would be using more of my nose and less of my throat. Where is the sound coming from? The sound is coming through the nose. And why does that happen? Because there is some constriction here. It is because I have some infection here. And therefore, the air which usually escapes through my mouth is not able to do so. And the air has to come out. So, where does it come out? What happens? The soft palate is lowered inside. Remember, we talked about the hard palate and the soft palate. The soft palate is, reduced, is lowered and this is blocked. So, where does air escape from? Air escapes from the nose. Try saying m, n, ng. Put your hand here, put your fingers here and you will realize that air is escaping. And that is why I pointed out to you how in some sounds air escapes through the oral passage and in some sounds like ma, na and ga and in some of the Indian languages in sounds like ana, you would notice that air escapes through the nose. Such sounds my dear students are called nasal sounds. In Indian languages we have nasalized sounds also. But then today, I am talking to you about the speech sounds of the English language. So, what have we done, my dear students? Very quickly, I have shown you what is the system. What are the different parts of the mouth which contribute to the creation, to the articulation of speech sounds? You have also noticed that air escapes usually through the mouth and therefore, we call them oral sounds. But when air escapes through the nose, they are called nasal sounds as in m as in mango, n as in night and ng the sound that comes at the end of song, king etc. In the English language, the sound ng does not come in the beginning of a word. So, you can have singing where it comes in the middle and at the end or you can have it in song where it comes only at the end but never at the beginning. M and N can come at the beginning, can come in the middle and come, can come at the end of words. But of course, I am going to talk about all that in greater detail when we talk about the consonant sounds. So, let us now try and understand how speech sounds are classified. All speech sounds are divided into vowels and consonants and of course also diphthongs. I shall deal with each one of them in detail. Let us first talk about the vowel sounds. Remember I am repeating and repeating vowel sounds. I am not talking about vowels. Why am I doing that my dear students? Because you would realize that in the English alphabet there are 26 letters of which 5 are vowels. But as we go through this lecture you will see that in the English language there are many more vowel sounds than 5. Very simply, if you quickly want to understand what I am saying, think of the vowel sound in the word come. What is the sound a? Uh? I am not talking about the letter. You are writing C O M E, does not matter. But what do you say come? Try and write it in Gujarati. What would you be writing? Ka and ma. Okay, the a uh is hidden within the ka because we do not say ka, we say ka. So, you have got a. Uh. What about the word calm? car, park, last. What is the sound? Ah. Think of a word like sit, hill, pink, king. What is the sound my dear students? E. What we in Gujarati would call raswa e. And then think of words like seat, sleep, deep, cheap etc. 
And what do you have? Read, dream. You have the dirga e or the long e. I'm not talking about letters, my dear students. I'm talking about the sounds. So you have four already. Let me go on. Think of words like pull, book, full, cook, should, could. What is the sound? The rasva u or the short u. Think of words like pool, cool, room, proof, fruit. Don't look at the spelling, just try and listen to the sound. And what is the sound that you hear, my dear students? The long u. How many do we have? A uh, and a, uh, e and e, u uh, and u. Uh, already six, my dear students. And we'll go on with many more because there are 12 vowel sounds in the English language. 12 vowel sounds, only five vowels as letters. Let's not worry about that. We'll understand that much better as we go on with this lecture. Let's look at the slide again, my dear students. And what do you see? I have said that vowels are produced, are articulated with no friction. What does that mean? The Gujarati word for friction, my dear students, is garshan. Garshan is when there is some sort of right friction, when something rubs against the other. Try saying any of the vowel sounds that we have in the English language or in any language that you know. What are the vowel sounds that come to mind? A, E, U. What happens, my dear students, when you articulate these sounds? You would notice that no part of your body is touch, no part of your mouth is touching any other part of the mouth. Whereas when you say P, when you say K. When you say sh, these are consonant sounds. What is happening? In p, both my lips are coming together. But in a, there is no friction. No two parts of the mouth rub against each other. So what do we say? Vowels are produced without friction. Have you ever wondered why in alapna, when people are singing, when there is alap, why is it? that it is always a ah, and not ka because ka the beginning of ka is the actual consonant sound after that it is a ah. i'll talk more about that when i talk about consonants but let's look at the slide once again and understand that when you're describing a vowel number one there is no friction number two we have to decide what the position of the tongue is is it the front, is it the back or the central? Look at your tongue. Try raising your tongue, my dear students, towards the top of the mouth. You would notice when you articulate various vowels, different parts of your tongue are closest to the top of your mouth. What happens when you say ah, when you say e, when you say oo? And of course, many more sounds that we will be talking about, vowel sounds in the English language. When you are talking about a, oh, when you are talking about a, eh, when you are talking about a, eh, when you are talking about a, uh, etc, etc. So, when we describe a vowel, my dear students, we talk about vowels as being either front or back or central. What does that mean? Which part of your tongue, is it the front? Is it the center or is it the back of the tongue that is moving towards the roof of the mouth? When we look at vowels, you'll understand better what I'm trying to say. You will have to just remember that in describing a vowel, we have to look at whether they are front, back or central. We have to see whether the lips are rounded or unrounded. When you say something like oo, Try saying oo, what happens? Your lips are rounded. What happens when you say ah, when you say e, you would notice that the lips are not rounded. We will also have to look at whether the vowels are, whether the vowels are open or close. Between open and close, you would have half open and half close. Don't worry. You just have to go back to your textbooks after you have heard this lecture. 
go back to your classroom or home just open the book that is prescribed to you and you know that the book that is prescribed for you is a textbook of english phonetics for indian students by t balasubramanian open the book look at the relevant page and you will understand all that i am saying so remember when we talk about vowel sounds we have to remember which part of the tongue is raised we have to remember whether the mouth is open or closed and we will have to remember what the position of the lips is this is what we call a vowel diagram now in a vowel diagram as i pointed out to you you are seeing whether front central back close half close half open and open what do we mean by a vowel diagram my dear students this is what you have inside your mouth it's a geometrical design of what is there inside the mouth when you look at your chapter which is called the vowels of english you will notice that for each this is chapter 10 in your textbook my dear students you will notice that for each you will find a diagram which will show you where exactly that particular sound is created from so you've got front vowels you've got back vowels you've got central vowels go to chapter 10 and look at each of the pages you also have close and you have half close half open and open close and open are the two extremes but between those you have half close and half open so you've got front vowels you've got central vowels you've got back vowels you've got vowels where close half close half open and open so if you look at a simple vowel like u my dear students you will see that it is a back rounded vowel and it is just above half close you will have to go back to your textbooks my dear students to page uh, to chapter number 10 and look at the detailed description of each vowel what i'm trying to show you here is how does one describe a vowel you have to describe it by whether it is open close half close half open whether it's central or back or front and what is the position of the lips is it rounded or is it unrounded or neutral as some writers call it so what are you going to do you're going to look at the vowels you're going to try and describe the vowels but for each vowel you would need to describe it with three why do we need to learn phonetic symbols in the english language remember at the beginning i talked to you about but not but my dear students you would say but and put but i have a problem because i learned the word put and so when i came across the word but i thought it should be but till my teacher told me but is but i'm not talking about now my dear students but when you were 5 or 6 when you first came across these words i'm sure you were also surprised by why u is a uh in one and why is it u uh in another the letter u has two different sounds there is no one to one correspondence look at the letter c in chair look at the letter c in cat look at this letter c in city chair ch cat k city s in our languages in most of the indian languages you would have no problem because you would be writing ch or k or s not the letter c look at the letters o o two o's in a word like book and in a word like school the same two o's in spelling but when i speak i have to know that in one it is the short u it is book and in the other it is the long u that is it is school i have to make a conscious effort to learn it and that is now being solved by your learning the phonetic symbols one sound one symbol there would be no problem in writing a word like judge because you will write j a j and not j u d g e how difficult it is 
So also we can go on and on with many examples as I've done with the sound E for you. Look at the slide again my dear students and you will notice that the long E in meet, meet, peace, receive, key, people. In each one of these words my dear students you would notice that the pronunciation is the long E or what we would say in our language is the dirga e. But in the English language, in each one of these words, the word spelling is different. And that is why we need to learn phonetic symbols. So, what do we have in the international phonetic alphabet? Not 26 letters, my dear students, as we have learned in the English alphabet. Instead, as many symbols as there are sounds. And how many sounds are there in the English language? 24 consonant sounds, 12 vowel sounds and 8 diphthongs. We will look at each one of them in greater detail now. 12 vowel sounds instead of the 5 vowels that we learnt in the English alphabet. If that is true, my dear students, we have to make a little effort to learn the phonetic symbols because once you have learnt the phonetic symbols, you will not have to worry about pronunciation. <coughs> you will not have to worry about whether to say but or but, put or but. You won't have to worry because the symbols that we would be using would be different. If you remember your Varnamala, Gujarati, Hindi or Sanskrit, whatever language you learnt at school and you remember, remember we begin with the vowels. So that's what we are going to do with our phonetic symbols also. <coughs> I've already told you but I'm quickly revising that in describing the vowel you have to realize which part of the tongue is raised the front, the central or the back. You have to see the height to which it is raised, close, half close, half open, open. And you will have to see the position of the lips, whether it's unrounded or rounded. So you would describe a vowel as, for example, front, close, rounded. So you need three words to describe a vowel. Remember, there are four into three, so you can have 12 different descriptions. I want you to pay careful attention to the slide now because I'm going to talk about the pure vowels first. 12 vowel sounds. On the left, my dear students, you have the phonetic symbol. We are not interested in the spelling. Remember, this lecture is called speech sounds. So what is more important for you, your ears, my dear students? Don't look at the spelling because if you look at the spelling, what happens with a word like hill and a word like like, you have the letter I in both the words, but in one you pronounce E and in the other you pronounce I. So we can't afford to do that. So we are going to have phonetic symbols. Remember, the symbols which I have not done in this slide each symbol has to be between two lines, right? Two parallel lines. You know, the kind that you put when you're writing the address. That kind of a line you have to have. What is the first sound? Look at the symbol on the left and then the word. Better still, let us first look at the let us look at the word first because then you'll know what is the bubble sound that I'm talking about. So, what is the first vowel sound? My dear students, why don't you try and read it loudly along with me? Just let's read the words. And what are the words? There is no word which is difficult for you. And I'm sure all of you can now read the words a little aloud. What are the words? Bead, bid, bed, bad, bard, got, caught, book, boot, cup, heard, about. In the about word, we are looking only at the first vowel, the uh, at the beginning. Now, if I try and 
try and see whether i have understood my dear students what are the vowel sounds we need to get rid of the consonants from our mind and only try and remember the vowel sounds because remember at this stage in the lecture i am talking to you about vowel sounds let's look at the slide again my dear students and what do you see we are now going to pronounce only the vowel sound so what do i have e e e a a a a u u a a and a difficult not really difficult because you are hearing it the first time but when you go back and revise it will become very easy you will notice that in the chapter on the first page you have this entire list what are the vowel sounds my dear students that we are talking about 12 of them e e a a a o o u u a a and a can we very quickly think of more words with the same vowel sound of course we can all of you can and maybe you could make it a competition with your classmates how many more words do i know with a long e of course i know come on i'm sure you can play the game with your friends you go beat and sleep and deep and cheat and read and go on heal sheet see come on you can have many more what about the short e yes king and hill and sing of course you can and so on with bed and set and head and bread and bad and fan and man and cat you could go on and on like that but remember in the course of one class i will have to talk to you also about the diphthongs and also about the consonant sounds and therefore i let you play this game when you have more time go back to chapter 10 Look at the vowel sounds and see how many more words you can write with the same vowel sound. But remember, when you have written cup, you cannot write but next to that. You can write but after come, though come has c o m e, and but has got b u t. But that doesn't matter because what are we learning, my dear students? We are learning speech sounds. We are not learning spellings. we are not learning the letters of the english alphabet so come on you can write cup and come and but you can write hill and king but you can't write like and ride with that because they are different the spelling might be i but the pronunciation is not e what you hear what you hear the speech sound the sounds of speech is what we are paying attention to Let's look at our slide again my dear students and you would notice that after the pure vowels the 12 pure vowels i have something called the diphthong di my dear students di means two and there are two vowel sounds in these the pure vowels can also be called monothongs though we don't usually you could technically you could call them monothongs because there's only one sound in the diphthong you would notice my dear students if you were to say these words we are reading the words we are not looking at the symbols at the moment and you would see that we say play ply boy go now near poor hair in each of these sounds my dear students the vowel sound actually has got two vowels say it again say it again play it's not play but it's play a very very slight movement from the sound a towards the sound e if it's not so clear for you let us look at the word now and let us say words like house and brown and noun and proud and shout and notice it is not the same au that we say in our languages but it's more towards au shout not shout but shout we have not noticed it but actually there are two vowel sounds moving from one to the other 
and that is why these diphthongs are also called vowel glides you know gliding a very easy movement you must have seen gliders in the sky now these sounds move from one vowel to the other they move easily so smoothly that you almost don't even notice that it's happening and that's why we call them vowel glides so what's happening in a word like play a ply i boy oi go o now ow near ear poor poor hair air if you notice on the left of the slide my dear students you have the symbols for the diphthongs please understand because these diphthongs have two vowel sounds for each symbol there are two letters you would have noticed that for the vowels we've got only one but for the diphthongs because they are di remember i told you two and that is why you've got two sounds can we very quickly read all the words on the right of the slide come on i'm sure you could do it clearly not necessarily loudly you don't have to scream but certainly aloud because you have to articulate it my dear students looking at a word will never give you the pronunciation of the word the sound is important you have to say it you have to articulate it so can we very quickly look through the slide and read all the words again come on my dear students bead bed bed bad bad cot cot book boot cup heard about and the diphthongs play ply boy go now near poor hair okay so what do we have here 12 vowel sounds and 8 diphthongs that's 20 sounds already my dear it's 26 letters of the english alphabet but we've got 20 and now we will have to move on and see the consonants the consonants consonants are produced with friction remember when you're looking at mcqs dash is produced with friction consonant dash is produced without friction vowel so when we are trying to describe a consonant we have to go back and you have to look at me and you have to remember the vibration of the vocal cords look at me again remember at the beginning of the lecture we played this little game where you had to put your finger here and see the difference between p and b p and b k and g t and d and so on so forth f and v what is happening these are pairs but one is voiced and one is voiceless so remember that when we tried to describe a vowel we had to talk about whether the lips were rounded or not whether it's a back vowel whether it's a front vowel whether it's closed or half closed or open or half open we needed three word description here too we need three words to describe and what are the three words the first would be whether it's voiced or voiceless so if you look at pa and ba pa and ba the second is the place of articulation where does the sound come from i want you to look at me when i say the word when i say the sound p p what am i doing which part of my mouth am i putting together p you say it and you will notice that the two lips come together so what is the place of articulation the two lips of course we'll have to use a slightly technical word and therefore we call it bilabial so you have bilabial is the place of articulation the two lips if you say a word a sound like f my dear students or a sound like w you would notice that what is happening is the upper teeth are placed on the lower lip f w you get my point so they become labio dental the lip and the teeth are involved to come back to the sound p where is it produced from the two lips it's called bilabial and then you have to talk about manner of articulation look at the slide again so is it voiced or voiceless where is the place the two lips bilabial and how is it produced you you enjoyed your diwali and you've seen the crackers why does a cracker burst 
because a lot of right a lot of that is stuffed into the cracker your bomb and then when you light it it bursts so also in the sound p what are we doing we are holding our breath we are allowing some air to be trapped to be closed to be imprisoned inside our mouth say p and you would notice that what you have done is you're shutting your mouth i cannot speak and shut my mouth at the same time but please understand when i say p what am i doing p i first put the hold the breath inside my mouth and then i release it how do i release it like a little explosion like your bombs that you have at diwali the crackers that you burst in a bigger way in big bombs but in our own crackers that's what's happening so what do we do we hold the air and then we release it and how do we release it like a little explosion and that is why we call it a plosive so p and b will have to be described as voiced bilabial plosive three words to describe voiceless bilabial plosive and so on but in order to understand that it is important for us to look at the next slide if you notice at the top you have plays and there you have the long list my dear students bilabial labiodental dental alveolar post alveolar palato alveolar palatal velar glottal i want you to remember this page the way you used to remember your maps for your geography examination if you had to draw point out where calcutta is in the map of india you had a mental image in your mind you could imagine india and you could imagine the the right hand side the eastern part of the country and calcutta somewhere there and gujarat if you had to mark so what did we do my dear students when we prepared for our geography examination particularly the map question you know where you could get full marks you created a mental image that is you could shut your eyes and you could imagine where calcutta is and where the himalayas are and where the vindhyas and where tamil nadu is and where cape comoros is you did that which part is the bay of bengal which part is the arabian sea how did you do that my dear students you created a mental image i want you to do the same thing with this page because that will help you in answering your mcqs if i ask you if i ask you what is t you would have to say it is a voiced alveolar plosive so with each of them so at the top you have the place of articulation and on the left you have the manner of articulation what are the manner nasal plosive affricate fricative lateral approximant i'll talk about the approximant just in a moment but before that what do you have nasal bilabial m what is m m is a bilabial nasal what about p and b they are bilabial plosives what about f and w they are labiodental fricative you can't learn it in one day you can't learn it in one hour my dear students you will have to open your textbook keep this page in front of you and learn the combinations the only way of learning this is to create a mental image so that when you shut your eyes you know exactly what the combination is like i'm repeating the way you prepared for your maps in the geography examination you will have to do for this paper on speech sounds because remember your mcqs would be like dash is a bilabial nasal and you will have to write m you get my point so it's very important that you are able to remember this page you could go on to come to the velar if you come to the end you will see that there is velar the first line there is a different symbol that is n you will have to learn these symbols my dear students because remember in speech sounds when you attempt to do phonetic transcription in a later paper it's important for you to know the affricates if i were to talk about the palato alveolar affricate are you moving with me my dear students look at the left hand side and you have found the affricate look at the top of the page and you have found palato alveolar what are the palato alveolar fricative affricates my dear students ch and j 
Both of them are new symbols. You have to learn the symbols ch and ch. And what about the next line sh and j as in pleasure. If I go to the left and read all the symbols in that line, I've got f and w, I've got t and d, I've got s and z, I've got sh and j, and at the end I've got h, which is a glottal. What I want to remind you is that when you attempt to describe a consonant, you need to have three words. What are the three words, whether it is voiced or voiceless? How, where is it coming from? That is the place of articulation and two, the manner of articulation. Remember, right at the beginning of the lecture, I told you vowels are produced without friction, consonants are produced with friction. And that is why you have to remember that fricatives and affricates and laterals and nasals, some sort of friction is happening inside your mouth. I told you, I will talk about the approximants. Can you go back to your slide, my dear students, and look at the last line, the approximant. Please go back to the slide and see that you have got w, y, w, y, r. W and Y, we say, are approximants or they are semi-vowels. They are semi-vowels because in W, if you notice, not to be confused with W, which is labiodental. Look at me, my dear students. When I say W, when I say W, what am I doing? The upper teeth are touching the lower lips and you've got W and F. But what happens when I say w, w, remember I am rounding my lips, it is almost as if I am saying a vowel, w, w, watch, window. So we call them approximants or semi-vowels. So on this slide, my dear students, you have got the 24 consonants. But let us quickly see how the pronunciation takes place. So you have got pin, bin, tin, din, kin, chin, gin. I am reading it top to bottom, not left to right. So, pin, bin, tin, din, kin, gin, chin, gin. Sup, sud, suck, such, sum, sun, sung. So, what are we doing? We are trying to show you how these sounds can come at the beginning, the middle or the end. So, if you look at pin, the beginning, per, sup, the end and leper in the middle. So, if you look at chin, such you would notice ch at the beginning and ch at the end so on what happens when you look at these my dear students you will see that you can practice the sounds that are difficult for you some of us may have a problem distinguishing distinguishing between sir and sh somebody might have a problem between v and w somebody might have a problem between a and a so, when you have a chart like this, my dear students, and all this is available in your textbook, remember, in the phonetics textbook that is prescribed for you. So, when you read these, my dear students, the sounds will become clearer to you. What do you need to do? You need to read aloud. And if possible, stand in front of a mirror, my dear students, and read because then you can see what exactly is happening. Why is it that the sound V is different from the sound W? You can see me, my dear students, and you can see that when I am saying V, what am I doing? And when I say W, what am I doing? Oh, I find it difficult, ma'am, you say. Doesn't matter. Say it in words. What words do you know with the sound V? You know village, and you know very, and you know verb and you know violence, and you know van, and you know vase, and what do you know with w? You know watch, you know window, you know want, you know wish, you know we. So what do we do? We have to pronounce. 
and pronounce my dear students by standing in front of the mirror because then you can see what exactly is happening. Are my lips rounded or unrounded? Am I opening? Is it half closed or closed? Because I can't look inside. But when I watch myself in the mirror, I'll get some idea of what I'm doing. So what do we know? We know that though there are 26 letters in the English alphabet, when we talk about speech sounds, there are many, many more sounds. And because there are many more sounds and not enough letters, we have tried to learn the International Phonetic Alphabet. I have shown you how it is done. It is up to you to go home and practice. Look at chapter 10 of your textbook for this lecture and it will all be clear. So, this is a paper which is very scoring because it's like a maths paper. You have to understand everything, my dear students, and then the sky is the limit. So, hope you've understood what speech sounds are, how we have to learn them, how we have to understand them, and how they will be useful for the correct pronunciation, especially for those of you who are aspiring to be teachers of the English language. All the best. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Sandham All Gujarat Integrated Classroom Satellite na madhyam ti jod ti kadi etle sandhan <laughs>